Hello, you're here with Elena, the content manager at One Ninjas, your trustworthy team of WordPress experts. And in today's video, we'll be diving into a little bit of a spicy topic in the WordPress world, Elementor versus Gutenberg. Which one should you use to build your site? Now, both sites have their diehard fans, each with pretty solid reasons for choosing their favorite design tool. But for the sake of this video, we'll be focusing on what we know best, e-commerce sites. We'll be sharing our first-hand experience with choosing Elementor, using Elementor, and how it impacted the performance of our site. We'll also share some insights of what some of our clients have gone through on their own sites. But first, we'll take a look at an overall comparison of what these two tools have to offer. And then we'll talk a little bit more about what we personally experimented and the choices we made with our site. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Gutenberg is the default WordPress page builder, giving you access to hundreds of blogs, each with unique settings. You can drag and drop these blocks around your page and you also have the ability to add a custom code if you don't just want to work with the blocks. Elementor, on the other hand, as you already know, is a third-party page builder with an extensive library of design elements and widgets. It also has a drag and drop functionality, which is a little bit more advanced since it uses a semi-automatically generated grid system. So you can drag and drop your widgets and elements on most areas of the page and very easily move them around the page. You can also use widgets for HTML code, which allow you to also do custom coding anywhere throughout the page. When it comes to pre-made templates, the winner is Elementor since you have a wide range of pre-made templates available to you, especially with the pro subscription. It is possible though to install third-party plugins for Gutenberg, giving you access to templates for pages and websites, but this again defeats the purpose of using Gutenberg, which is to avoid using any additional third-party plugins and keeping your site lightweight, or at least this was the main motivator for us. On the other hand, what you do have access to with Gutenberg is a pattern directory, which is patterns of pre-arranged blocks that can save you a lot of time when creating new pages and content. Performance-wise, Gutenberg almost always delivers a better performance score, smaller page sizes, faster loading times, fewer server requests. This is mainly because Elementor has more advanced options at your disposal and that you can also use Elementor with more add-ons. Plus, Gutenberg is technically always installed on your WordPress site, so when you're using Elementor, you technically have two page builders on your site, making it simply heavier from the get-go. Years back, we decided to ditch our old page builder, which we were using with the Abata theme, and move to Elementor. We chose to implement Elementor, hoping that it would help us improve our overall website performance and improve the design of our site at the same time. And for a while it did. However, over time, we started noticing a severe decline in page loading speed and performance. This made us question whether Gutenberg would be a better fit. After all, Gutenberg is WordPress's native solution. There's no design tool better built for WordPress than WordPress's own tool. And using Gutenberg would mean that we wouldn't have to use any extra plugin, keeping our site a little bit leaner and lightweight. If you're an e-commerce store owner, you already know that a slow loading site can be catastrophic for sales and traffic. In our case, Elementor was loading a lot of assets. This was causing our site to slow down, to show server errors, 503 errors, and then this other error that occurred when an, a page was created by a different user, where it wouldn't allow us to preview the page. All of these little things started adding up and we couldn't risk our website's browsing experience to continue to decline. So we decided to take action and move to Gutenberg. Let's talk a little bit more about why we took this decision. While Elementor itself did give us access to a lot of cool design tools and assets to build our page, it was the plugin itself and its add-ons was 
too much of a load for our side. On the other hand, as soon as we tried Gutenberg, we noticed a simpler editing experience and less load on our site. And our in-house design team was able to recreate the look of our site using entirely Gutenberg. So we got to keep the aesthetic part of our site. In this decision process, we also consider the future of our site and our, the future of the WordPress platform. As WordPress evolves, so will Gutenberg. Gutenberg will become more robust and feature-rich and it will grow alongside WordPress. By embracing Gutenberg now, we are positioning ourselves in a place where we can take advantage of any new developments that come up in the WordPress ecosystem, since we'll already be using Gutenberg. We also factored in the nature of our site. Our customers regularly engage in tasks such as purchasing products, seeking product support, and running background processes like cron job for tasks such as handling license support requests and lead generation. This means that performance wise, there is already a lot going on on our side. Hence, why we needed to eliminate potential causes of the slowdown by transitioning to Gutenberg. That's not to say that we, like many Elementor users, didn't have any concerns about making this change. After all, we did choose Elementor for a reason. Some of the features that we loved about Elementor included that we can easily drag and drop widgets, style them, create our own design template, and get short codes to place anywhere on our site. At the same time, we were concerned about Gutenberg's limitations, such as a lack of dynamic widgets and the ability to use custom field shortcodes. Just like we were initially, many WordPress users are reluctant to let go of using Elementor because of its ease to use. Just managing, editing, or changing styles can be done by any beginner user. And such was the case for some of our clients who loved Elementor for its design capabilities. However, they were also starting to experience similar performance issues to our own. In their particular case, however, we recommended using a hybrid approach, where they can use Gutenberg for the most visited pages and Elementor for internal pages with less traffic and complex activity. At the end of the day, it doesn't have to be one or the other. And while we did choose to go for Gutenberg, smaller sites or simpler sites without a lot of users or an e-commerce functionality might not experience any performance issues at all and can successfully continue using Elementor if so they choose. However, even in these cases, thinking about the future of WordPress and how its updates and future releases might tie in with their native Gutenberg blogs can be a reason enough to start considering a switch. And you? What do you prefer to use on your site? Have you experienced any of these performance issues? If you're looking to revamp the design of your WordPress site, whether you're using WordPress with WooCommerce or any other e-commerce solutions, we can help you find the best look and performance for your site. We even offer WooCommerce maintenance plans to make sure that your performance is as best as possible year round. We'll leave our WordPress and WooCommerce maintenance plans linked down below. And if you have experienced any similar issues with the performance of your e-commerce site, tell us all about it in the comments below. That's it for now. Until the next one.